We've discussed central tendency, mode, median, and mean. Our attempt to come up with a value that captures the central point, the representation of our data, something that gives us that numerical summary of our data. But a single score does not really capture the full sort of picture of our distributions. For example, let's look at what happens when instead of just doing histograms of all the caffeine content, regardless of restaurant, we break them up into different restaurants. What I've done is created separate histograms for just Applebee's, just Arby's, just Burger King, and just Hardee's. Over here, if we look at the means, we will see with the exception of Arby's, the difference between Applebee's, Burger King, and Hardee's, they're all very, very similar. There's just not much difference in means. But when we look at the histograms, we can see that there's actually quite a bit of difference in the distribution of the data, right? And see that for uh, Applebee's, most of the data is clustered strongly in this sort of 39 to 42 range with only a little bit of variance to either side. Yes, there is sort of a symmetrical pattern out here, but there isn't a very high frequency. Whereas when we're looking over here at uh, Burger King, we see that there's a little bit more of a range uh, and they're all about equal to each other. We're not going, uh, you know, uh, we don't have this big peak. And then lastly, if we look at Hardee's, we can see that there is a much larger variation, much larger range between the low and the high and the peaks are not as clear, right? So while the mean can tell us a lot about the central tendency, we're missing something. We need something else that can tell us more about the shape of the distribution. What we're looking for is a measurement of variance. How much does our data vary across the mean? Is there all the data clustered together? Is it spread out, right? Variance can give us a much more complete feel for what our distribution is. So how do we calculate variance? Well, the first step with any data set is to calculate a mean. In fact, from now on, whenever you see a list of numbers, I want you to start thinking about calculating a mean. See a list of numbers, calculate the mean, right? Look at a menu, see the prices, calculate the mean. Okay? Always be thinking, calculate the mean. So we start by calculating the mean. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that mean and we're going to go back and we are going to subtract it from each score in the data set. So what we're getting is the difference between the score and the mean. However, since half of our data is going to be below the mean and half of our data is gonna be above the mean, we're gonna have half of our data is negative, half of our data is positive. If we try to add up that difference, it's gonna come out to zero. So in order to alleviate that, we square the difference. By squaring the difference, we get rid of those negative signs and we get a magnitude of the difference between our scores and the mean. The next step is to take those square different scores and add them all up. We're going to sum them all up. This produces what we call a sum of squares. The sum of squares is going to be a very important number in this class. We're going to be using it a ton. So it's really important to begin to understand what it is, right? The sum of squares is the difference between each score and the mean squared, and then we take each of those square differences, we add them all up. Once we have the sum of squares, now all we have to do is divide by the total number of scores or observations we had. Let's look at it in equation form. So this is exactly what we just talked about. We're going to take each of our scores represented by x, and we're going to subtract the mean. Once we've done that, we are going to square that value. We then use that summation sign that tells us to take x minus m squared, and then we're going to add up each of those. Then at the end, we divide by the total number of observations. This is the formula for variance. Let's take a look at it in practice. So if we have 10 cities and we have data that tells us the price of a gallon of milk across those cities, we need to determine the variance. Well, what's the first step? Well, remember, you see a list of numbers. You need to get the mean. 
Well, we know how to calculate the mean. We take each of the scores, we sum them all up, and then we divide by the total number of observations, which gives us a mean of 3. Next, we're going to have to take that mean of 3, and we're going to have to subtract it from each of the data points. We had 10 data points, so we track the mean from each of those 10 data points. We then square that answer, and we add each of them up. If you go through and do the math on this, you'll find that our sum of squares is equal to 10. Lastly, we divide by the total number of observations, which was 10, so in this case, we get 1. One problem we have is that the variance is squared, and that's usually not what we need, right? If we have the number, the price per gallon of milk, variance is the price per gallon of milk squared. We have the variance of, say, caffeine, it's the variance of caffeine squared. What we usually want is the some sort of measurement of variability that is in the same units as our observation. So we have to get rid of the square. It's real simple. All we got to do is take the square root. When you take the square root, you get rid of that squared units, you're back to the original units, and that's what we usually use when we're doing calculations. Variance is when we have squared the units. The standard deviation is after we take the square root. So there's two ways to calculate the variance and that'll have an effect on the standard deviation. It comes down to what we divide the sum of squares by. There are two different ways. One is you divide by n, the number of observations, or you can also divide by n minus one, one less than the number of observations. We are going to be using both methods. Both methods are a form of variance, but they are two different kinds of variances. I don't want to go too much into the details about the differences. The short version is, when you're dividing by n minus 1, you're trying to estimate the variance of the population that your data sample came from. Whereas we are attempting to calculate the variance of just our data set, just our subset of numbers, and not try to infer the variance of a wider population. Okay, so what we're seeing here is the data that I've already entered from problem 1. Uh, from uh, the textbook, the set problem, uh, set one, problem one, that was assigned, right? So we have nine points of data here, right? It says 10 because we have the heading here, but there's nine points of data. And the first step is to calculate the mean or the average. We can use the average function uh, to do that. Uh, that'll give us the correct answer. Uh, so our average is 29. Now, uh, we could do uh, for the, uh, the variance, right, for uh, calculated the variance of our data, right, and if we do that, we get uh, 10.75, and if we use the standard deviation function, uh, and we select our data, right, we get uh, 3.2 or 3.3, right, so uh, this is what we get when we use the n minus one method, as I was talking about. That's not what we're trying to do. But let's let's kind of do this uh, in a manual way. It helps us make sure we get the right answer. I think it helps us understand what's going on with the actual calculation. So remember, what we need is we need a sum of squares. A sum of squares is when we take each data point and we subtract the mean and then we square it. So let's do that. Let's take each data point and subtract the mean. So in this case, I can tell it, take the data, and I can give it the cell, right? So I'm going to take the cell A2, right? That's where that data is stored, right? It's in cell A, uh, uh, column A, row 2, and we are going to subtract the mean of 29. And there we go. And we need to do this for each data piece. Uh, with Google Sheets, we can actually just copy that and then we can paste it and it will move the equation down to each cell and it'll change to match the appropriate cell. So uh, that is the different score of our data minus the mean. Okay. Well, remember if we were to take all of this and we were to sum it up, so let's take all of our data and add it all up. What you'll find is the answer is zero. Right? 
I want to talk to you about that. It's because there's as much data above the mean as below the mean, so when we add up the different scores, they're going to be zero. So in order to capture the magnitude, what we have to do is we have to square this value. So I'm going to do B2. Again, that's the cell where our data is in. And to square it, we use Shift-6 for this little caret, and then we just put 2. So that's squared the data. Okay. Same thing. We can now copy that and paste that answer all the way down. And now we have the squares of the different scores. So what we need is we need the sum of squares. So I can get the sum of all of these answers, all these squares. And this 86 is now my sum of squares. Okay. So with the sum of squares calculated, we can then calculate the variance all right, by just taking the 86 and divided by the 9, which is the number of observations. We have something like 9.5. And to get the standard deviation, we take the square root of that 9.5, and we get 3. Okay, So these are the answers that we're looking for. These are the answers that will match the back of the book. They differ from over here because, what? look, if we take the 86, right, and we divide by the n minus 1, which would be 8, that's where we get the 10.75, and then the square root of the 10.75 is where we get the 3.3. So again, we will learn when it's appropriate to use n minus 1 to calculate variance. Uh, this is not the time for that. We will talk more about n and n minus 1 uh, in a couple of chapters when it becomes uh, more relevant.